So here it is, the fog screen that I built, um, sitting on the custom sled that I made that is uh, using uh, pneumatic casters to keep it from bouncing around when I move it over uh, any kind of rough ground. Um, these are the lighting trusses that I use. I use uh, Odyssey lighting truss, the lightweight ones, which I don't really like, but they were cheap. But because I don't trust them, uh, I had to do things like this, putting these pins in to keep it from sliding because they do slide. These friction clamps are not heavy enough to, uh, to hold this up, even though these lighting trusses are rated for 250 pounds, which I also don't trust, which is why I've doubled up and why I use two of them. Um, this fog screen doesn't quite hit 200 pounds, so uh, I'm uh, using less than half of what these are rated for uh, in tandem. So that's, um, I feel pretty confident that they're going to hold up. Uh, I'm in the market to potentially get some uh, some newer ones. The thing I like about these is they're they're light, they're compact, they fold up pretty nicely. So. They get the job done, I just don't trust them. Okay, so this is the beast. Up on the top here, we have the, uh, the water tank, um, which is also where the fog is generated. Um, so it holds the water, and uh, these are the cables that go to the uh, three foggers that are inside here. They generate the fog that kind of floats in this chamber. These fans on top push air through. And the air displaces, pushes the fog out, and then up and around this back portion here, and then goes down into the body of the fog screen, which combines it in the fog chamber and then basically collimates it, kind of funnels it down into the uh, honeycomb. So it's actually a pretty simple, uh, pretty simple setup. There's not really a whole lot to it. Um, the most complex part is probably just getting laminar flow, airflow, which is not the easiest thing. And without further ado, I'm going to uh, go ahead and hoist this thing up and get it secured so, uh, so I can show the operation. Um, instead of doing this in real time, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up with a little uh, time-lapse uh, magic uh, so you don't have to sit there and watch me struggle with this, this thing. Okay, now that that little bit of movie magic is over, this is what it looks like when it's uh, hanging up on the trusses. So, basically I hoist it up with a rope and a pulley, and I just leave that hooked up for Halloween and just kind of drape the ropes down on the sides here. But anyway, um, yeah, I have some, uh, some chain uh, that go into some eye bolts up there, and uh, I have some, uh, uh, I don't know what you call those D-rings that you can uh, unscrew and uh, basically an adjustable link, if you will. Um, and I can adjust how long the chain needs to be to keep this level. And then I've got a good, oh, maybe about an inch um, on those uh, eye bolts that I can raise up and down just by, uh, just by turning the nuts in or out. Uh, so that way I can get this thing um, at fairly level. It doesn't need to be perfectly level. It's not really dependent upon that. I just like to keep it level so the, uh, the misters don't, uh, the ultrasonic foggers don't get either too much water or too little water over them. Um, and then on this end we have the automatic fill switch, which if the level is off, then it's either going to uh, not trigger soon enough or prematurely to fill it up. But anyway. And then down here, um, I normally have these legs turned out uh, a little bit more, uh, kind of to match the way the back ones are, so that way it's a wide enough path for the kids to walk through during Halloween. Okay, and then on this side we have the uh, we have the connectors. We have the 120 volt main power, which goes in, which is basically just a butchered uh, extension cord. Um, and then I have a DMX in and out. Um, and then I have an auxiliary 12 volts uh, output, which I actually haven't thought of one use for yet. But, you know, it's nice to know that, that if I need it, it's there. And then I have the output for the uh, water filling. Um, and then I have LED indicator holes drilled, but no LEDs there yet. It's one of those to-do things that's so menial that I just haven't worked up the energy to do. So, um, and here we have the uh, condensation drainage pipe. So as the water builds up inside, um, actually you get a lot of drip from the splash from the, uh, the foggers, as well as condensation. And 
to keep that from building up, I have a kind of a drainage trough inside the uh, fog screen, and that drainage trough feeds this tube. And the hose runs into uh, into the this is the water tank for today. Um, the hose runs into the water tank, so any uh, condensation drip off goes into the uh, into the tank there. For filling the fog screen, I have a uh, inline submersible pump. Um, thank you, Electronic Goldmine, um, that I use for when I'm uh, filling this with distilled water. I prefer to use distilled water as it doesn't leave any. Um, well, let me rephrase that. It doesn't leave uh, much uh, residue in uh, minerals or calcium or anything like that. Um, now, if I'm in a situation where I don't have the ability to use distilled water or water tank, um, I also have this valve, which I can just hook up to the tap. And again, I prefer not to use tap water just because I really don't like opening this thing up to clean it out. So yeah, distilled water is the best. Okay, now that our tank is filled with water and we are all hooked up, ready to go here. All we gotta do is turn on the auto fill. And, well, watch this guy fill up with water. That pump is pretty fast. You can actually hear it filling. This pump is actually pretty fast. Um, I wanna say it's like two gallons per minute, maybe four, I don't know, but looks like I'm already gonna have to tend the tank. There were three gallons in there. Yeah, it's probably a lot faster than that then. But anyway, yeah, the fog screen when full holds about six gallons, so let me go ahead and get some more water in here. Okay, our pump just shut off, so that means that we are ready to go. So let me get these uh, fans up to speed. And let's see if we can enable some fog flow. And there we go. And that's pretty much how it works. Actually, the fog flow is kind of thick. Let me see if I can thin that out a little bit. There we go. Nice. Well, maybe a little too much. <laughs> nice thin veil of fog that you can project onto and walk through. So, and this is generally the setup I use for Halloween. I have a uh, 3000 lumen project projector that uh, projects onto this uh, fog and um, it looks pretty nice.